A couple days ago, I decided to document everything that's been happening to this new VR game known as Orion Drift. And if I could sum up my YouTube experience in the past couple of days post that video's release, it would probably just have to be this. You should seriously consider becoming a screenwriter. What in the actual fuck? Good evening. Seriously though, thank you everybody for all the support on that video. It's absolutely insane to see my hard work gain so much attention. I'll be doing a Q&A at 10k, so if you guys have any questions or Ryan Drift or just me related, make sure to subscribe and then leave a comment. But anyway, back to the story. So as that video was released, I was checking a lot of the comments and a lot of how people were perceiving Orion Drift in general. And what I ended up noticing was something that I was kind of expecting, but at the same time, I am not happy to see. Before we get into this, just gonna say real quickly, this is not the fault of any creator, viewer, or person from my comment section. If anything, the blame should fall on me for not defining this game in a clear enough light to where people wouldn't see it in this way, and for that, I do apologize. So please, let me make it right. If you've seen the title already, then you obviously know what I am talking about. For a lot of people, I've been seeing a growing sentiment within both the Gorilla Tag community and the VR community in general that Orion Drift is trying to be the next Gorilla Tag, or as many people have just put the label on it, Gorilla Tag 2. And to an extent, I can kind of understand why people would do that. While yes, from the trailer, the game does seem to have Gorilla Tag's movement mechanics, defining it as Gorilla Tag 2 would be a massive understatement to what this game is trying to achieve. But in addition to that, coming from the Echo VR space, a much smaller niche compared to the Gorilla Tag scene but still pretty relevant when it comes to Orion Drift, many people are still under the impression that this game is trying to aim to be an Echo VR remake that is trying to fill the spot that Echo VR once had. And to an extent, this point was pretty reasonable at the time that it was being conceived. When another Axiom held their first look event to see what would become Orion Drift, their game looked a lot like Echo VR, and it really seemed like they were trying to go from that direction, even though within the keynote they stated that they did not want to be an Echo VR successor. All of these labels then made their way down into the YouTube space, where they were conceived and turned into videos by both the Gorilla Tag community and the Echo community. Once again, I am sorry for that, my bad y'all. And while it might seem a bit weird to explain it, many of the reasons why these creators did it has to do with the reason why you're watching this video right now, which is Gorilla Tag and Echo are two very recognizable things. They both have their own names, reputations, and communities that fall behind them. So if you're able to break into that niche and get people knowing what your name is and coming back to your videos, then bada bing bada boom, look at that, you have officially become a full-time YouTuber. And this is why when I said earlier that I didn't want you guys blaming any creators for this label being thrown around, it's because truthfully they were doing what they do best, which is appealing to all of you by getting you to click on their videos. I mean, let's be honest here. I'll present two titles that I wanted to title this video and you tell me which one looks more interesting to you. The first one is one that centers more around Orion Drift. And while sure that Orion Drift one may appeal to you now that you know what it is, a new viewer will see Gorilla Tag 2 and immediately click on that video because one, there's been a growth Growing dissident in the Gorilla Tag community surrounding the way that the game's been handled and its updates, and two, the idea of a sequel to one of the biggest virtual reality games ever is enough to, well, pull 76,000 views. And while it is cool that Orion Drift is able to build off of the elevated press from the Gorilla Tag community, I at least firmly believe that the game is going to reach heights that Gorilla Tag never could. And so if a game like this is tied to the label of just Gorilla Tag 2, that can actually be a pretty harmful sentiment that could hurt the growth of the game in the future. Why you might ask? Well, let me explain. In virtual reality, there's a huge trend that goes on when it comes to marketing games to the general public. This trend also influences how people make virtual reality games, which is the idea of a label. When virtual reality was first starting out, you couldn't find a game that even remotely resembled a PC game unless it was modded. Back then, some of the most popular titles were VRChat, Onward, Beat Saber, and even Job Simulator. 
All completely original concepts that were able to use the freeform features of virtual reality to elevate the play experience and truly immerse people in their games. But then slowly, things started to shift. While I could be wrong, I think the first example of a VR game getting a PC label slapped on it was Population 1. Now, combining with the growth of the Quest 2 at the time, this game absolutely slammed in its sales. A VR battle royale that included building, climbing anywhere you want, and amazing gunplay naturally led to people labeling this as the Fortnite of virtual reality, since of course, with Fortnite, their main thing was a battle royale with 100 people, where the unique wow factor was that in addition to having the very unique style of gunplay that they have, you also had the ability to build structures and eventually, you know, what involved into just building a 5-star hotel with free Wi-Fi anytime you get shot by a pistol. And that was good. Great, even. Meta marketed the heck out of Population 1, and because of that, the VR industry truly, for the first time ever, reached the mainstream. With everybody getting a Quest 2 for Christmas and wanting to try out games such as Gorilla Tag, Population 1, and everything else that the market had to offer. But from the developer side, what people ended up seeing was the trend which was slapping a PC label on a VR game ends up appealing to that PC audience which causes them to immediately come over to your game. The outcome of this has basically just led to people porting over PC style games into virtual reality and then calling it, let's say, you know, for example, the Counter-Strike of virtual reality when it really should just be called Pavlov. The Escape from Tarkov of virtual reality when it really should just be called Ghost of Tabor. The Rainbow Six Siege of VR when it really should just be called Breachers. All of these games saw major success from slapping a PC comparison to their game and getting an audience from that. But how does that relate to Orion Drift, you might ask? Well, people are trying to slap a label on this game. I know it's been a while and everyone's gotten used to it, but really for the first time in a long time, we're actually seeing a big budget original virtual reality game. And since people can't slap a label on it, they look at the closest thing they can correlate it to, which when seeing the movement, immediately leads to people calling it Gorilla Tag 2. And considering the fact that I'm probably speaking to a lot of the Gorilla Tag community right now, I'm sorry guys, but unfortunately, the community has a bit of a reputation of toxicity. And whoa, 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 put down your pitchforks, y'all. Please don't put a pipe bomb in my mailbox, please, I swear. The game that I used to make videos on too, Echo VR, also had a toxic community. And once that label was slapped onto our game, it was not coming off. Sure, we may have not been averaging 1 million players a day, but we at least have some idea of what you guys were experiencing. And I can at least speak from personal anecdotes, even though that might not be the strongest evidence, that a lot of people, especially new VR users, are kind of turned off into actually going and playing Gorilla Tag because of the reputation of the toxicity that it has. And I really, personally, do not want that to happen for the next game that could potentially be the biggest VR game ever made. I mean, seriously, there's so many X factors to this thing that kind of just make it its own giant wow factor that I personally think when someone sees it or hears about it, if it's not slapped on with any labels at all and is completely original, they'll probably buy a headset just to try it out, even if it's a used Quest 2. And what's the result of a huge influx of new players to virtual reality? Non-toxicity. I hope. For many of you in my comment section who were always talking about how Gorilla Tag as a community was super toxic, this is our chance. You will actually be able to meet people from both who are new to virtual reality and people who are actually curious to check it out from the regular VR community. But I know the way that I talk about it, it's like, oh my goodness, this is going to solve all our problems. Truthfully, it's not. But Orion Drift is super unique in the sense that it'll actually have 200 player lobbies with a map that's big enough to boot. So if you ever get tired of someone within your lobby, instead of having to go back into your tree and find a new server and go through all that hassle, you can just move to a completely different section of the map. You won't have to hear them, you won't have to deal with their bullcrap, you literally can just hang out with your friends, meet new people, and have fun. But all of that can't happen if people's first impressions going into the game is, oh, it's a Gorilla Tag 2, so I'm going to keep my shield up and not talk to anybody because they could potentially be toxic and cuss me out. I know for many of you this video might be a little controversial into that I do apologize but if it means taking a hit short term to ensure the growth of Orion Drift long term then that's a risk that I'm just willing to take. I've been in this community for so long and we've all been preparing for a moment like this even to the point where I was actually able to meet the another Axiom team and Lemming himself and we all very much want to sway away from this game just being a Gorilla Tag sequel because once again as stated it can be so much more. But with that being said, remember that I'll be doing a Q&A at 10k subs, so leave a like and sub if you haven't already. Let me know your comments and the thoughts below, and yeah, check out this video if you want to hear more about what Orion Drift and the story truly is. Thanks for watching.